Hey everyone, I'm Abby Sharp. Welcome back to Abby's Kitchen. As you can see, the bump is gone. So if you missed it, I had a baby boy and I am back in the studio and it feels so, so good. It's a little chaotic here trying to balance a baby and work, but to celebrate my return, I thought I would do a review of a heavily requested lifestyle YouTuber today, Linda Sun. So Linda has really hit the ground running as her channel has grown exponentially since she launched it three months ago. So her videos focus largely on what I eat in a days or weeks, intuitive eating, her exercise regime, and some clothing hauls. I got a ton of requests for this video, which makes a lot of sense to me since I think we both speak to a lot of you who may be drawn in by wellness culture, but also want to avoid restrictive and punishing regimes. But before we get into my nitty gritty, a few standard disclaimers here, folks. The information in this video is for entertainment and educational purposes only, so you should always speak to a healthcare provider about your unique healthcare needs. Number two, while I do make an effort to include relevant and well-researched content in my videos, please keep in mind that what you may see may not fully reflect a creator's diet, as we just can't necessarily review the full catalog of videos featured on their channel. Uh, number three, please be kind in the comments, both here and on Linda's channel, for a trigger warning that some graphics and discussions may potentially be disturbing to some of my viewers, so you can always feel free to skip this video if you'd like. And finally, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and ring that little bell so that you never miss out. Okay, so let's kick things off by chatting about Linda's diet and her what I eat in a days. So Linda's channel has only been around for a few months. And while I'm shooting this ahead and therefore it may not be completely up to date, I can tell you that at the time of filming, I literally watched all of her content, like every single video. I can fully see why you all love her so much. But when you watch a lot of Linda, you quickly learn some of her favorite meals and snacks. So let's talk about some of her go-tos. So breakfast. Now breakfast for Linda might be a smoothie bowl with some homemade granola, peanut butter, and lots of fruit on top. A yogurt bowl with some Greek yogurt, berries, and granola. Oatmeal made with chia seeds, nut butter, maple syrup, and fruit. Or most frequently, it's her famous protein pancakes made with oat flour, protein powder, banana, almond milk, powdered peanut butter, and sometimes some chocolate chips. And then the whole thing is topped off with some crunchy natural peanut butter, fruit, and maple syrup. Mm. So let's talk about these breakfast options all of which sound insanely good and make me want a breakfast do-over today. But in all of her morning meals, she's got a healthy dose of fiber-rich carbs and antioxidants from the colorful fruit and berries. She's also got more great fiber-rich, slow-digesting carbs in the form of granola, oatmeal, and the oat flour in the pancakes. And like our girl Stephanie from Nutty Foodie Fitness, she loves her PB. So, I'm just so happy to see that she's not afraid of loading up on the healthy fats in the form of whole nuts in the granola, chia in the oatmeal, and peanut butter on, well, everything. I would probably say that the Greek yogurt bowl and the protein pancakes are a bit more well-balanced than the other two options since they offer the extra protein to really help support her obviously very active lifestyle. If you watch her What I Eat In A Days or What I Eat In A Weeks, you'll see that she works out pretty much every single day. So I think it's safe to say that she's got some serious carb and protein needs. And since Greek yogurt offers about 20 grams of protein per cup, and her protein pancake recipe has about 40 grams of protein, when paired with all of the carb-rich toppings, like the granola and the fruit and the maple syrup, I think they are both pretty amazing post-workout meals. Now let's talk about her lunch. Now in one video, Linda talks about how she often loves having breakfast foods for lunch because hello, breakfast foods are life. And like we already established, she loves her peanut butter. So uh, sometimes you'll see her eat some of her breakfast staples midday as well. But other times she often has some kind of stir fry or a meal built around her mom's famous Bing. Now you cannot watch a Linda Sun video without seeing a lot of Bing. So if you're not in the loop, 
Bing is kind of like a Chinese flatbread meat pancake. Sometimes it's made plain or sometimes it's stuffed with ground meat or other ingredients. It's obvious that Linda's mom is a Bing master and has made me definitely want this particular dish so badly that I searched on Uber Eats to get it delivered to me like this week. But anyways, I think my breastfeeding hunger is definitely showing. <laughs> but often you'll see Bing show up as like a side dish at Linda's meals and other times it's more of like the star of the show. So in one video, she has her mom's famous Bing topped with avocado, everything bagel spice, Parmesan cheese, and a boiled egg, AKA like the coolest East meets West take on avocado toast I have ever seen. And then in another video, it's like a classic avocado toast with eggs and tomatoes, which was actually a dish that her fans suggested that she makes. Now it turns out she liked it so much, she said she would be putting it more regularly into her meal rotation. Now both of these avocado loaded lunches are perfectly balanced in my books. We've got carbs in the bread or the bing, we've got healthy fats and fiber in the avocado, and some high quality protein in the egg. Now if she wanted to beef up the veg, she could definitely serve this with like a little side salad, um, but since she's already got like a lot of produce and grains at her breakfast, I'm not particularly worried about her fiber needs for the day. On other days, Linda opts for something like a stir fry type lunch, which I think is always a great example of balance. So on one day, it's an amazing looking kimchi fried rice where she's got protein in the eggs and the shrimp, carbs from the rice, fat from the cooking oil, and of course, lots of veggies on board. She's even got some added probiotics in the kimchi. And what I like most of all about this is that she doesn't talk about eating the kimchi because it's anti-bloating or whatever diet culture tells us. It's likely just the flavor that she really likes. Now, as for dinner, we're seeing a greater reliance on more traditional Chinese fare, likely because Linda puts such a huge priority on eating with her family. And her mom seems to do most of the cooking in the house. And I love that she eats with her family. I mean, there's tons of evidence to support the emotional benefits of regular family meals. So research suggests that eating together as a family is often associated with better academic performance, higher self-esteem, greater sense of resilience, as well as lower risk of substance abuse, teen pregnancy, depression, eating disorders, and obesity. When I coach parents on how to reduce mealtime drama and picky eating with their young kids, my number one suggestion is always family meals. And I talked a lot more about this in my division of responsibility video right here. But in terms of these dinners, I like that we do see a mixture of vegetarian and animal protein. Even Linda herself says she rarely eats beef and relies more readily on things like eggs, seafood, tofu, and some chicken. But again, balance is inherently built into these family style meals. So one night we've got protein from the tofu, carbs from the brown rice, sweet potato, and bao zi. I think that's how you say it, please correct me. Um, healthy fats in the peanut sauce and fiber rich sauteed veg. This looks crazy flavorful. And I would say it's flavorful because Linda isn't afraid of sauces and fats, which I feel like so many other lifestyle YouTubes are. Another night, we've got some carbs from the rice, protein from the eggs and fish, and some fat plus fiber from the eggplant sauteed in oil. Honestly, her food may not always be Instagram worthy, but it's simple, balanced, and I bet it tastes really good. Her portions are also totally normal for a girl her size. We're not seeing massive bowls of kale or like three times her protein needs like we see so often here on YouTube. And while some people might comment that she seems to eat a lot of carbs, I would say that it's not at the expense of other macronutrients and it's still within the 45 to 65% recommended range for macronutrient distribution. And considering she is doing mainly cardio heavy HIIT training, she probably really needs that fuel. But without any food rules, she's likely just responding to her body's unique needs. Okay, let's round it out with some snacks, which like her main meals, definitely reveal some themes. 
So some days she has just like straight up fruit. Oftentimes it's kiwi or melon, and other times she pairs her fruit with things like yogurt and granola. Obviously, you guys know I would say that the latter will make a more satiating snack because we've got some fat and some protein in there with the carbs from the fruit and the granola. Um, but I also get that sometimes you just want like a little some something to tie you over and a little bit of fruit is really good for that. Now, Linda is also obsessed <laughs> with these crab snack things, which I had to look up because clearly they're worth writing home about. So these are actually broad beans, but they're crab row flavored. So while they are high in salt, they do have a good amount of protein on board. One of those little packets would actually make a pretty awesome accompaniment to like a piece of fruit if she wanted to have like a more complete and more balanced, satisfying snack. The other Linda favorite, as you probably know, is popcorners, which is kind of the only kind of diety snack food that I really see her eat. But in terms of convenience foods, they are a totally fine choice if she enjoys them. They've actually got like a little bit of protein per ounce and for a chip-like snack, they're actually also relatively low in salt. So if she wanted to up the satiety factor in these, since there really isn't any fiber in corn-based chips like these, she could dip them in some hummus for protein or some guacamole for some healthy fats. But I also just get that sometimes you just like them as is. And finally, let's talk dessert, which can be really easily summarized by just one main food category, ice cream. I feel like I've been introduced to so many new Ben & Jerry's flavors just by watching Linda's channel, which I love because I too am ice cream obsessed. But whether she's cutting herself pieces of ice cream cake or tucking into that amazing Netflix and chill flavor of ice cream, she does so in a morally neutral, nonchalant way. That ice cream cake, for example, was slowly consumed over multiple days and multiple videos and her ice cream portion seemed totally aligned with a normal, healthy appetite and relationship with food. She was neither binging on an entire tub in a cheat day fashion, nor was she weighing out and perfectly measuring a specific half cup serving. She's able to clearly eat what satisfies her and then kind of put the rest away. I acknowledge that this is just not very possible for a lot of you, so if you're struggling with mindless eating and you're still on your food freedom journey, I think that putting some ice cream into a bowl is a really good place to start. Then when you finish that portion, check in with yourself to see if you are maybe not satisfied yet and you want more. If you do, you can give yourself that permission unconditionally to go get more, but at least this gives you some time to consider your hunger cues and to check in with yourself emotionally and physically before you're just eating on autopilot. Okay, so now that we have shared some of Linda's typical meals and snacks, what can I say about her general pattern and relationship with food? Well, there's so much good to say about what I'm seeing here, but I do want to start by discussing Linda's history. And let's watch a clip. A huge part of the guilt for me was needing to have full control over all the meals that I ate. I need to eat perfectly and I need to exercise to burn off what I ate. Counting every calorie and only eating good foods. And if I wasn't in control, oh my. Guilt, the shame, the sadness just attacked me. And to be honest, that really just isn't living. Okay, so in Linda's August video about food guilt, she talks about how in the past, she really let the media perpetuate certain beliefs that some foods are good and others are bad, and that it resulted in her assigning moral value to herself. She also talked about how she recently realized that the more that she would restrict a food, the more that she would end up wanting it. And this would end up in this kind of vicious cycle that basically took over her life. I mean, has this girl been studying my intuitive eating series? Because the woman just nailed it. And for a young 19 year old, the girl has some tremendous insight that I certainly did not have at her age. I mean, her mom should definitely be really proud. Now, if you watch enough of her channel, you'll see a bunch of inspirational quotes peppered around Linda's channel that serve as great evidence of how her relationship with food has changed over the years. For one, in her video on letting her followers choose her diet, 
she talks about how food shouldn't be your entire life, but that for her, when she started to let herself have the food that she craved, her body learned that it wasn't going to be restricted anymore and that she didn't have to obsess over it. She then goes on to say that if you were to look back at your life in 10 years time, you wouldn't remember the calories that you ate or the workout that you did at home instead of going out with your friends. You would remember the experiences that you had with people that you love where food and exercise weren't the only thing that you could think about. So if we look at my intuitive eating series, this is a great example of principle number three, make peace with food. So if you need a little bit of a refresher, definitely go watch that video and then come back right here. Then in her video on what she eats to lose weight, she says, I want to eat because it's fuel. I don't want to mindlessly eat because I won't feel good later. I want to move my body because I deserve to be healthy. Now, this is an advanced concept to grasp for those starting out with intuitive eating but it is definitely the end goal that a lot of us strive for. This eating and moving for pleasure and for physical comfort, while also allowing for emotional pleasure, is really what happens when all of the intuitive eating principles work together as one. In another clip, she describes this as focusing on the after feeling. That is, how do you feel after eating a certain food? Do you feel energized, sluggish, do these things put you in a good mood, etc. So while we don't want food to play into our subjective sense of self-worth, we do want to notice how foods make us feel both emotionally and physically in the most non-judgmental way possible. Remember principle number four, be the food anthropologist. But I also love that her diet reflects her laid back yet respectful approach to food and her body. She eats the food she loves, ice cream, pancakes, her mom's famous bing, but her meals incorporate a lot of nutritious ingredients like peanut butter, yogurt, fruit, eggs, and veggies. Also, her portions are indicative of a normal balanced appetite and not one that's bouncing between states of restriction and binging. And I love that she's also more concerned with sitting down to a family meal, enjoying whatever her mom puts on the table than controlling every single micronutrient and macronutrient that falls on her plate. But now let's move on to another big question. What kind of health and wellness information does Linda share on her channel? Now, first I have to tell you that when you guys first directed me to her videos, I was a little turned off by some of the titles that I saw since you were all telling me that she's all about intuitive eating and body positivity, etc. Yet I was seeing a lot about weight loss and cheat days and flat stomach in her thumbnails. I was really worried that she was going to turn intuitive eating into another weight loss diet fad. But when I actually watched her videos, I did see that this was largely kind of just clickbait. It's like Linda was saying, gotcha, now that I got you here, listen up. This is what you actually need to know in order to live really well. Now, I do know that a lot of Hayes proponents would still interpret Linda's content as appropriation and misuse of the body positivity movement, but I've done a lot of thinking on this issue over the past year, and at this point in my journey, I'm in a place where I would respectfully disagree with that sentiment. I stand with Linda. I would say that it's important to acknowledge that intuitive eating in the full sense and intentional weight loss are not exactly compatible concepts, at least not how the original founders conceptualized it. Don't be mad at me for saying that. I mean, I didn't write the book. Evelyn Tripoli and Elise Rush did. And the model really does suggest that you have to actively reject the diet mentality in order to fully embrace intuitive eating. But while Linda's content is clickbaity, I don't think she's explicitly promoting intentional weight loss anywhere. The most she has said is that her body has changed a certain way when she stopped overanalyzing everything that she put in it. I will also say that it is very important that those of us with thin privilege acknowledge that our lived experience is very different than those in larger bodies, and therefore our experience of something like intuitive eating and not dieting may come with a lot less risk, especially in the public eye. This is why my content is just so riddled with disclaimers. 
But in one of Linda's videos, I also saw that she had a disclaimer of her own stating that just because eating and working out a certain way resulted in her losing weight or her having a flatter stomach, etc., it doesn't necessarily mean that the same is going to happen to others. So yeah, ultimately, I do see a lot of value in people of all body types spreading the intuitive eating and the body positive messages, as long as they're not in the same breadth of promising weight loss to everyone who tries the method out. I'm going to be working on a whole video about this. But anyways, when I watched a lot of her videos, I felt like they were more like inspirational pep talks than dogmatic lists of wellness rules. Her way of communicating wellness information is informed yet gentle and kind. So you don't walk away feeling bad that you aren't eating the way that she is or that you're not able to think about food the way that she does. In fact, in one viral video where she tests the workouts and diets of a bunch of popular YouTubers, which is a pretty cool video, she says that what ain't in a day videos should be for inspiration, not comparison. And that just because you might work out or eat like a YouTuber doesn't mean that you're ever going to look like them. Amen to that. So let's talk about some of the themes that I see in her content that I think that we can all learn something from. First, she doesn't equate weight with health. In her video on what she eats to lose weight, which turns out, like I said, is more clickbait than anything explicitly restrictive, she talks about how she's now actually the heaviest that she's ever been. But she says that once she took the emphasis and focus off of her weight, she was able to achieve true health, happiness, and strength. She also said that instead of focusing on what she couldn't directly control, her weight, she focused instead on what she could control. That was her behaviors and general lifestyle. Especially because, in her words, you can't hate your body into being healthy. Love it. The result was that in breaking up with her scale, she was able to fall in love with exercise, family, and food, reiterating that weight and health are not synonymous terms. Second, she promotes gentle nutrition. Remember that last tenet of intuitive eating? So Linda offers some really great real world examples of them. So let's just check it out really quick. Also food wise, I'm all for eating everything my body craves, but I also know that I need to take care of my body with nutrients and antioxidants and beautiful fruits and vegetables. Not because I want to lose weight, but because that's how I show my body that I care for it. I love that Linda understands the delicate balance between choosing foods that you just enjoy because they're fun and that are also nutrient dense. So to Linda, healthy foods are not low calorie diet foods. They're foods that make her body and mind feel good. And since we're on the topic of intuitive eating principles, she's also rocking the concept of joyful movement. Let's take a look. It's wrong. Speak up and be yourself unapologetically. Yes. Okay, seriously, does anyone else just love watching the Sun family work out? <laughs> From her parents' pretty impressive moves to her brother's constant farts to the banter between the whole gang, I want to see a reality show with these people where 90% of it is just like push-ups, planks, and pranks. <laughs> I mean, she also says that working out in the morning sets her mood for the day, and I think that's a great revelation and also non-punishing motivation to exercise. And that takes me to number four, Linda's emphasis on the power of social connection. Linda talks a lot about the importance of her family in her life, not just for physical health, like as workout buddies, but for her spiritual and mental health as well. In one video, she describes her family as her light at the end of the tunnel which I thought was such an insightful statement for such a young person to make. I think we all need to just focus on that sentiment ourselves in this crazy 2020. But number five, she redefines self-care for Gen X. Now, if you Google self-care ideas, you're largely going to come up with some home face masks and like a list of the best Manny Petties in your city. But Linda explicitly calls this out as being pretty superficial. 
Instead, she lists things like spending time with your family, logging off social media, smiling more, exercising, and eating what makes her feel satisfied as some of her ways to practice self-care. She also talks about the benefits of just taking a break and that success doesn't need to mean working harder, faster, stronger, etc. all the time. Nor does it mean doing things to make others happy or conforming to society's expectations. Again, that seems like a really mature concept for an almost 20 year old to grasp. Number six, she respects her body. This is another great example of some of the intuitive eating tenets in action. So in her video on how she loves her body, she shares that when she stopped seeing her body through like an aesthetic lens and instead started to see her body as something that carries her through life every single day, she was really able to get on a path towards self-love. And by shifting her value of herself from her body to other things like her intelligence and kindness and compassion, she was able to build up the confidence to take better care of her body. I just want to say that there's nothing wrong with having aesthetic goals and not loving your body all the time doesn't make you an intuitive eating failure, but respecting it by giving it kindness through joyful movement and energizing food is the goal that we really want to strive for. So if you need a refresher on respecting your body, check out my video right here. All right, then finally, who would benefit from some of Linda's content? Linda's content is literally a motivational TED talk set to some really fun food vlogs and food porn. I can see why people are obsessed. I am obsessed. So Linda is the voice that we all need in our head. She's the YouTuber that we all need in our feeds. This girl is 19 years old and wise beyond her years. Of course, Linda is not a nutrition professional, but she also doesn't claim to be, nor is she doling out nutrition information or diet tips or prescriptive food rules. She just seems like a girl on her own body liberation journey, sharing her own learnings with the world. And I like that she isn't dogmatic about what's worked for her. In one video on what she did to lose weight, she specifically says, do what works for you. She says, if you want to do intermittent fasting or keto or weigh yourself every day, great. Find your own journey and own it for yourself. Yes, some body positivity advocates would argue that her content, particularly around weight loss or having a flat tummy, etc., is anti-body positivity, largely because it's often seen as deceptive to discuss intuitive eating in any context of changing your body. And like I said, yes, as it was written by the founders, intuitive eating and weight loss are not compatible concepts. But I also don't think that Linda is actually promoting weight loss or promising weight loss from intuitive eating, even if her choice of words might be a little bit unclear at times. If I'm being honest, I sometimes do think that there's a lot of policing of words in the haze and the body positive space. And I myself have been guilty of it in the past since I was just kind of so engrossed in trying to quickly navigate and learn about that world. But from where I am now, I'm not always sure how productive it is to nitpick on people's journeys. So as long as Linda isn't explicitly promising intuitive eating as a means to an end goal of weight loss, I think it's totally fine to share her unique experience. But intuitive eating is not a weight loss diet. I repeat, it is not designed at its core to result in weight loss. But depending on where you're starting and how the tenets improve your relationship with food, it absolutely can result in weight loss. When you're more in tune with your hunger and your fullness cues and have learned how to respect your body, you may find yourself less interested in overeating previously demonized foods. You may find that you want to move your body in ways that feel good and not punishing. And you may just find some more sustainable ways to eat that actually feel good. And I think throughout all of the content that I've watched from Linda, she describes this really well. But of course, if you find it triggering to see or hear any talk of body transformations or weight loss, then this may not be the channel for you. Otherwise, if you're on a journey yourself where you're looking to challenge your food fears, learn what gentle nutrition looks like in real life with or without the goal of weight loss, I think Linda's channel is a great resource to have. 
So folks, that is all for today. If you like this video, be sure to give it the thumbs up. Leave me a comment below with any other YouTubers channels that you want to see me review. Subscribe to the channel and I will see you next time on Abby's Kitchen. Bye.